Emmett, Lottie, Daxter, Freezy Pop, Freezies, Super Dupers, Flavor Ice. Wait, aren't those just off-brand Otter Pops? Let's talk about otters. Normally I would say otter folk, but I really just kind of want to talk about otters. There are quite a few otter folk homebrews out there on the internet already. If you want to just grab one of those so that you can play a small or medium sized humanoid creature that looks like an otter and acts like an otter, that might be your best bet. But for my taste, I'd say my preference is somewhere between the blue and the red ones. I would prefer to play an actual otter, uh, maybe with a little more of a humanistic perspective. The alternative being playing a generic anthropomorphic creature that just happens to be otter flavored. Where do you think otter flavored lands on the colored popsicle spectrum? I assume it's like way above banana, but I'm not sure if it's as good as like purple. Either way, if you want to play as one of these deep diving clam tummy crying abs of steel aquatic hunter, this episode might have a few more innuendos than I was prepared for. You're gonna have to really embrace the the floof noodle. Ah, huh, didn't bleep that one out? All right then. You're gonna have to start somewhere that's a little less people and a lot more otter. And that either means grabbing the monster manual or the find familiar spell. You could just pick a smaller medium sized creature and for all intents and purposes that would work for both humanoid and non-humanoid. Normal otter, otteroid? The giant sea otter, which I would allow as an otter folk variant, can get up to about six feet long from tip to tail, which is different from snoot to boot, but I think I'm mixing my metaphors here. The high end, they're about a 75 pound medium otter would be pushing it. So the sweet spot is really gonna be somewhere in the tiny to small creature range. And so if you use the stat block from the monster manual, it's gonna show you a small or tiny sized creature. If you're using the stat block from the book, which is a Pathfinder monster manual, you're getting a large strength penalty for your size, as well as a big dex bonus because of being small or tiny and then a slight boost to your wisdom which is pretty normal for most animalistic creatures the fast and loose way to look at this would be that otters get a plus two bonus to dexterity and a plus one to wisdom as they are fierce predators and have billions of whiskers that make their perception checks amazing more on that in a minute they get a plus two to dexterity and a minus two to strength for each size category away from medium so if you are going the tiny route you would be getting a negative four to strength and a plus four to dexterity and since that's solely size based you would also get the plus two dexterity and the plus one wisdom from there they are just like any other wild animal or creature from the book bonuses to smell based perception checks a thick fur coat to protect them from cold climates a natural swim speed of up to 30 feet and just for the hell of it advantage on acrobatic checks or proficiency in swimming, acrobatics, sleight of hand checks, basically anything dex based that doesn't require thumbs. Well, they do have thumbs, but not the awesome kind of thumbs that we got. Can't go around giving people thumbs all willy nilly. Madness. Doesn't sound like a lot, but there's gonna be a lot of situations where having thumbs is quite advantageous. This type of thumb hubris. That's how we get owlbears, people. Is that what you want? More owlbears? Thinking about it now, owlbears don't have opposable thumbs either, but you know the wizard that made them would have totally done that had he thought about it. Back to the otters. You could even take their fur a step further by saying that they have to spend a little time every day to fluff the fur up to gain that elemental resistance. And it could be something that they are immune to cold or they're immune to water or that they, they float naturally, but only if they spend you know the half an hour to an hour actually taking care of their fur. Much like a wizard preparing their spells at the beginning of the day, they have to prepare their, their coat. Make it waterproof. This is a real thing otters do. Throw it in the game. Pretty standard fare for the most part. While they won't be dynamos in combat, well, maybe they would be if you give them a spear gun or something, they should excel as world navigation, movement, and utility. Otters are famous for their whiskers, rock hard abs, and small dimensional pockets located in their armpits where they store all manners of tools, devices, and things used to destroy their enemies. Maybe I should step back a bit. Otters have an amazing ability to sniff out clams in cold, dark places in the ocean using their whiskers and agility. I think that this could easily be adapted to a keen sense-like ability, favoring things uh, in adjacent squares, or simply just based around smell. I know whiskers aren't technically smelling, but it makes more sense than giving them dark vision. Beyond this, they're very skilled at using rocks and tools to open said clams. I think this is a really unique ability, and I think it deserves more attention, possibly having a proficiency in a favorite tool. And I do say favored tool, because otters will tend to have a favorite clam smashing rock, and they will keep it with them and covet it over other rocks for whacking those tasty clams. And that is where the dimensional otter pockets come into play. Dimensional otter pockets, the f am I doing with my life? Otters have... <laughs> Otters have flappy pockets. <laughs> no, I can do this. <laughs> I need a minute. <laughs> no, I'm okay. Otters have flappy pockets of skin under each arm where they will store food, trinkets, and their favorite clam rock for safekeeping. This is another great reason for otters to be artificers, but I honestly think that they should be something that all otters have. Running it much like the gloves of storing with a few more limitations as a free action or a bonus action, you can store or retrieve a single item from the dimensional space. The item must be less than 10 pounds and might be able to held in one hand. Uh, you get as free or restrictive as you want with this, going more from the handy haversack direction or being more restrictive as having
having only a single item being able to store this way, much like the Eldritch Knight's weapon bond. This is a really fun mechanic that I think should go really well with the speedy fingers of these water dogs. The swim speed and resistance to the elements could be augmented by additional things of like holding their breath, but that's kind of weird as it is in D&D. I certainly can't hold my breath for 12 minutes, but hey, if you got a high enough constitution and uh, you just feel like doing it, holding your breath, not whatever you were thinking of. All the while, fighting a dragon turtle at the bottom of the ocean. Apparently that's not an issue. So who cares? Do whatever you want. Playing an otter as a tiny, highly mobile character seems like it could be a lot more fun than playing a humanoid that looks kind of like an otter. As things are, I don't see why you couldn't have a sweet pair of fantasy pants or a magical trident to go with your lurker of the deep otter warlock. I mean, opposable thumbs are nice, but uh, you can't always have everything. Some people have thumbs, other people have rock hard abs of steel that they crush their enemies on. You could have an otter monk with the way of the tum tum or path of the iron whisker. Gets advantage on unarmed strikes if they use their tum tums. Or instead of deflecting arrows with your paw, you just let them bounce off your belly with lethal effect. <clears throat> I do also like the idea of an otter folk wizard that has all his spells written on small rocks tucked away in his otter space. Clam totem barbarian, bonus armor, and I don't know, maybe he's really good at shucking or crushing people with rocks. Bonus damage with improvised rock weapons. Or maybe your favorite rock weapon. Either way. Thanks again for watching. If you've ever played an otter folk, or you have a fun idea for one, or you have an otter familiar, let me know down in the comments below or on the Discord. If you have any character art you'd like to share, you feel free to do so on the Discord or on the Patreon. The website is also up if you want to get any prints or stickers of the artwork. Thanks again, as always, to everyone who helps make this video possible, and for supporting us here on YouTube as well as live streams on Twitch. A comment and a like helps us a lot. If you'd like to use any of the artwork from this or other videos for your home games or your character sheets, please let us know. And as always, keep your dice on the table. And your favorite rock, Stowed away in your armpit. Actually, that may not be good advice. Unless you have arm pockets. Otter pockets. Your bra is not an otter pocket.